Today's story time is brought to you by the letter C. This is the third letter in the alphabet. We can say A, B, C, D, etc. We have the third letter is the letter C. And the letter C makes the sound k, k. You try that? K, k. Also, it makes the sound ch, ch. So you can have k. make up your whole new song for yourself. So um, we're going to start with a nursery rhyme, and this is about a crooked man. The word crooked starts with the letter C. And if you'll notice here on the, the flannel board is a crooked man. Now crooked is the opposite of straight. So you can sit up very straight, or you can sit kind of crooked like this. Okay, so we're going to sing a song about the crooked man. There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a little crooked house. So see if you can sing that with me. There was a crooked man, and he walked a crooked mile. He found a crooked sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat who caught a crooked mouse, and they all lived together in a little crooked house. There they are. So crooked man, crooked, the word crooked begins with the letter C. Goodbye, crooked man. And then we have a sixpence, with a, which is a type of money used in um, England. It's a sixpence. And then we have a style. A style is something you'll see probably on a farm that has a long fence. And it's a way for people to get over a fence um, safely. So that their animals, they can't climb the stairs there, so they can't get over it. So this is called a stile, when it has a little ladder kind of uh, steps going up and down. So goodbye. There. And then we have a crooked cat. Now you can see that the tail of the cat is crooked, and his ear is crooked. And then we have a crooked mouth who has a very crooked tail. And then we have a crooked house, which is very crooked. And there we go. And we're going to hear a story today about a cat, because the word cat starts with the letter C. And let's make sure my glasses on. And this is a story about a black cat named Sid. And Sid was not, did not eat one meal a day. He did not eat two meals a day. He did not eat three meals a day. He ate six meals a day. Six Dinner Sid by Inga Moore. There he is. <clears throat> Here's the title page, Six Dinner Sid by Inga Moore. And this is published by Simon & Schuster Books for Young Readers. Okay. Sid lived at number one Aristotle Street. He also lived at number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six Aristotle Street. Sid lived in six houses so that he could have six dinners. Each night he would slip out of number one, where he might have had chicken, into number two for fish, on to number three for lamb, liver at number four, fish again at number five, and ending at number six with a beef and kidney stew. Since the neighbors did not talk to each other on Aristotle Street, they did not know what Sid was up to. They all believed the cat they fed was theirs, and theirs alone. 
But Sid had to work hard for his six dinners. It wasn't easy being six people's pet. He had six different names to remember and six different ways to behave. When he was being Scaramouche, Sid put on his fancy airs, swanky airs. As Bob, he had a job. He was naughty as mischief and silly as Sally. As Sooty, he smooched, but as Schwartz, he had to act rough and tough. All this work sometimes wore Sid out, but he didn't care as long as he got his six dinners. And besides, he liked being scratched in six different places. One, two, three, four, five, six. And he liked sleeping in six different beds. One, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, life on Aristotle Street was just about perfect for Sid until one cold, damp day, he caught a nasty cough. The next thing he knew, he was being taken to the vet. Poor Sid, he was not taken, he was taken not once, not twice, but six times. One, two, three, four, five, six. He went with six different people in six different ways. The vet said Sid's cough wasn't nearly as nasty as it sounded, but to be on the safe side, he should have a spoonful of medicine. Of course, Sid did not just have one spoonful of medicine. He had six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, one black cat does look much like another, but nobody, not even a busy vet, could see the same cat six times without becoming suspicious. Sure enough, when the vet checked in his appointment book, the vet found six cats with a cough all living on Aristotle Street. So he called the owners at once. One, two, three, four, five, six. And oh dear, Sid was found out. When they discovered what he had been up to, Sid's owners said that he had no business eating so many dinners. They said in the future, they would make sure he only had one dinner a day. Now we're going to sing about a, a song about a little girl who's made out of candy. Her face is made out of a marshmallow. So we're going to sing. There was a girl made out of sweets, made out of sweets, made out of sweets. There was a girl made out of sweets, and her name was Candy Sue. So you're going to clap on your thighs two times and clap once. And her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Okay, we're going to do it two times at the end. Okay. Her face was made of a marshmallow, a marshmallow, a marshmallow. Her face was made of a marshmallow, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy soup, candy soup. Her nose, let me put her nose on. There's her nose. Her nose was made of a gumdrop, a gumdrop, a gumdrop. Her nose was made of a gumdrop, and her name was Candy Soup, Candy Soup, Candy Soup. Let's give her some eyes. And I'm just going to hold her eyes up very close to you so that you can see what kind of candy are her eyes made out of. If you said M&M, you are correct. 
Her eyes were made of M&M's, of M&M's, of M&M's. Her eyes were made of M&M's, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Okay, now we're going to give her a mouth. And her mouth was made out of licorice. Let me put the licorice up here. Nice big smile. Her mouth was made of licorice, of licorice, of licorice. Her mouth was made of licorice, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. And now we're going to give her some ears. And her ears are made of gummy bears. Her ears were made of gummy bears, of gummy bears, of gummy bears. Her ears were made of gummy bears, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. And now I'm going to give her some hair. And her hair is made of cotton candy. It's a really pretty pink. I'm going to put it up here. Her hair was made of cotton candy, of cotton candy, of cotton candy. Her hair was made of cotton candy, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Now I'm going to give her a body. And her body is made out of cake. That starts with the letter C. Cake. Let's put her body here. Her body was made of cake, of cake, of cake. Her body was made of cake, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Now I'm going to give her some arms. And her arms are made of candy canes. That starts with the letter C, candy and cane. Her arms were made of candy canes, of candy canes, of candy canes. Her arms were made of candy canes, and her name was Candy Sue, Candy Sue, Candy Sue. And then her legs were made of lollipops. But we're going to turn them upside down. And we're going to put them here. I hope you can see them. Oh, let's see that. I'm going to just drop this down a little bit so you can see this. You see them? Her legs were made of lollipops, of lollipops, of lollipops. Her legs were made of lollipops, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue. There was a girl made out of sweets, made out of sweets, made out of sweets. There was a girl made out of sweets, and her name was Candy Sue. Candy Sue. Candy Sue, and her name was Candy Sue, Candy Sue, Candy Sue, and her name was Candy Sue, Candy Sue, Candy Sue, and her name was Candy Sue. And there you have Candy Sue. Okay, so what part of her body were the lollipops making? If you said legs, you're right. What part of the body were the candy canes? Those were her arms. What part of the body was the cake? It was her body. What part of the body was cotton candy? That was her hair. What part of the body were her gummy bears? Those were her ears. What part of the body was the licorice? That was her mouth. What part of the body were the M&Ms? Those were her eyes. What part of the body was the gumdrop? That was her nose. And what part of the body was the marshmallow? That was her head. Let me take that. And that's candy soup. Okay.
Now we're going to hear a story called Crab Cake. Crab. C R A B. Crab Cake. C A K E. Cake. Crab Cake. And this book is written and illustrated by Andrea Tersumi. And it's called Crab Cake Turning the Tide Together. And on the cover, you see a little crab, and he's carrying a big cake. Crab cake. Oh, and look. These are things that are in the ocean on the end papers here. Lots of cake. Lots and lots of cake. I'm just going to move out of the picture so that you can see the pictures here. And here is the title page. And here on the title page, you have Crab Cake Turning the Tide Together by Andrea Sarumi. And this is published by Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Under the sea, where sunlight touches sand, lies a place that's home to many incredible creatures. Clownfish hide in the stinging anemone. Manta ray gets cleaned by these other little creatures are cleaning him. Sea turtle holds her breath. Tangs swim in schools. Sea scallop does loop de loop. And crab bakes cakes. Seahorse pretends to be seaweed. Spiny lobster looks for a new home. Parrotfish crunches coral and poop sand. Dolphin blows bubble rings. Pufferfish puffs up. Toadfish sings. Octopus hides in a coconut. And moray eel pops out of her cave. And crab bakes cakes. Snapper eats and eats and eats and eats. And down here you have a little uh, crab talking to a baby crab and says, Well, where did you leave it? So I think they're talking about the shell. The venomous lionfish does whatever she pleases. And crab bakes cakes. So life goes on under the sea. Until one night, there's a big splash. Parrotfish freezes, snapper freezes, shark freezes, pufferfish freezes, clownfish freezes, spiny lobster freezes, seahorse freezes, sea turtle freezes, octopus freezes, dolphin freezes, manta ray freezes, even lionfish freezes. And crab? Crab bakes a cake. What's going on? Shh. Did Crab just bake a cake? Hide. For how long? I don't know. Crab did. Crab baked a cake. Can I have some? Sure. Bye.
Sure. May I? Of course. Can I have the part with the shell? Of course. Finally, everybody comes together. Ugh, it's everywhere. I was scared. It was loud. We have to help our kelp. That was awful. What now? Whew, you're okay. What do we do now? Thanks, Crab. This cake is good. We've got to think of something. Whew, you're all okay. Boo, glad we're all here. All right. Anyone have any ideas? Lobster lifts, snapper shove, clownfish rolls, manta rays move, turtles toe, dolphins drag, clam encourages, octopus inks, sharks carry, and sea lions lug. Everyone help. They put a sign on that says, come get your junk. Under the sea, where sunlight still touches sand, incredible creatures go on swimming, playing, and doing what they do. Especially crab. Now it looks like he's got some helpers. And that's the story of crab cake. I want to show you a smaller letter C. And what color is that C? Can you tell? It's yellow. And we're going to look at some pictures of some words that start with C, the letter C. So the first one is corn. And we're going to see. C is for corn. Corn starts with C. C is for corn. Corn starts with C. C is for corn. Corn starts with C. Oh, corn, corn, corn starts with C. And then we have two cupcakes. And so now we'll sing C is for cupcakes. Cupcakes start with C. C is for cupcakes. Cupcakes start with C. C is for cupcakes. Cupcakes start with C. Oh, cupcakes, cupcakes, cupcakes start with C. And the next little picture is of a, what is that? Candle. C is for candle. Candle starts with C. C is for candle. Candle starts with C. C is for candle. Candle starts with C. Oh, candle, candle, candle starts with C. And then we have some carrots. C is for carrots, carrots start with C. C is for carrots, carrots start with C. C is for carrots, carrots start with C. Oh, carrots, carrots, carrots start with C. And the last one we have are some cows. I think we'll put the cows over on this side. C is for cows, cows start with C. C is for cows, cows start with C. C is for cows, cows start with C. Oh, cows, cows, cows start with C. Very good. So C is the beginning letter of the words cows, corn, cupcake, candle, and the last thing is carrot. And that's the letter C. 
Okay. Okay. Now everybody, I want you to reach up high. Take your hand all the way up. See how high you can go. Can I touch the ceiling? Almost. Now reach for the moon. Reach for a star. Stand up. Reach up. Far, far, far. Good, good. Now bring your arms down and shake them. Good. Shake a leg. Can't see my leg, but I'm shaking it. And now shake your other leg. Now make your legs go walking. Walking, 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 walking. Hop, hop, hop. Now we are running, now we are running, now we stop, now we stop. Do it again. Walking, 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 walking. Hop, 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 hop. Now we are running, now we are running, now we stop, now we stop. Now, with my hands, I clap, clap, clap. With my feet, I stamp, stamp, stamp. With myself, I turn around. All together now, let's sit down. And we have time for one more story. And this is a story about a very famous cat named Pete. Pete the Cat. And this is the first book that was written about Pete. And it's called, I Love My White Shoes. And the story is written by Eric Litwin. And the art is by James Dean. Pete the Cat. I love my white shoes. Oh, look at all the shoes hanging off of the telephone wires. I'm going to be backing out of the picture a little bit so you'll be able to see the, the pictures of the story. Okay. Pete the Cat. This is the title page. I love my white shoes. Art by James Dean creator of Pete the Cat, story by Eric Litwin. Pete the Cat was walking down the street in his brand new white shoes. Pete loved his white shoes so much, he sang this song. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. I love my white shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large pile of strawberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Red. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Everything is cool. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. I love my red shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large pile of blueberries. What color did it turn his shoes? Blue. Did Pete cry? Goodness no, he kept walking along and singing his song. Awesome. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. I love my blue shoes. Oh no, Pete stepped in a large puddle of mud. What color did it turn his shoes? Brown. Did Pete cry? Goodness no. He kept walking along and singing his song, Groovy. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. I love my brown shoes. And look, Pete has a cup of coffee. Or it could be tea. Oh no, Pete stepped in a bucket of water. And all the brown, and all the blue, and all the red were washed away. What colors were his shoes again? White! 
but now they were wet. Did Pete cry? Goodness, no. He kept walking along and singing his song. Rock and roll. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. I love my wet shoes. The moral of Pete's story is, no matter what you step in, keep walking along and singing your song. Because it's all good. And that's the story of Pete the Cat. I love my white shoes. There are several books about Pete the Cat that I hope you will look for and check out from the library. Um, because you know you can check out books from the library, you just call and reserve them, or you can type it in online and then we'll pull them for you and then you come and pick them up. It's called our grab and go um, service. We also have a delivery service that will bring the books to your home if you qualify for that. Um, so even though the library building is closed right now, we're still trying to do um, programs and have services available to you. So I hope you'll check those out. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so we've had a story time about the letter A, the letter B, and the letter C. So what do you think next week's story time is going to be about? It's going to be about the letter D. So I hope you'll all join me for that. Okay, bye.